It's Friday and it's time for your weekly UAS news update. And this is week 55. And this week I wanna talk about four different topics. And the first one is related to the DJI data leak. You've been hearing about this for almost a year now if you've been following me. And, uh, and there's a report that came out and I wanna talk about it. Another thing I wanna talk about is a police drone that hit a police helicopter. And I wanna talk about the incident and I wanna see how we can learn from this. And I wanna talk about Pix4D that just came up with a new offering for their uh, cloud-based services. And lastly, I wanna talk about Pilot Institute. We just hit 20,000 students this week. So really excited about this. So let's get started. So the first thing this week is related to DJI and to the data leak that supposedly is happening with data going to China. If you've been following this in the news, you know that uh, DJI has been accused of uh, being a security risk and uh, the, 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 um, the Department of Homeland Security has decided that they were not gonna be using drones anymore uh, from DJI because they, they, they basically are gonna be a risk of sending data back to China. Now, um, this company, Booz Allen, they're an IT consulting company. They released a report this week that was uh, created for another company that's called Precision Hawk. And Precision Hawk is a commercial drone and data company that, uh, that does a lot of different things. And so this report basically tested the risk assessment for possible vulnerabilities on three different drones. And the first one, and all of them are government editions, which by the way, is the version of the software that DJI created for government purposes only when all of this started to come out. And uh, they, they tested the Mavic Pro uh, government edition, the Matrice 600 and the Matrice 2 Enterprise. Now what came out of it is they identified different data connection and they made sure that uh, no data was basically leaving the drone to go to any server, either in China or to DJI itself. And what it came out is that none of this data is actually leaving the drone, which is what uh, DJI advertised for the longest time. Um, they also looked at different potential risks and they found a bunch of vulnerabilities that could be exploited and triggered by a threat. If there is a source that was going to try to get into the drone and collect data, then there's a possibility of that. Now the attacker would have to be uh, either have per physical access to the drone in itself or be within a direct radio communication with the drone. So it has to be done from really, really close. Uh, the report says that they brought up all these vulnerabilities to DJI and DJI replied by saying that they've already mitigated some of them and that they're gonna be working on the rest of them. So um, an interesting thing in here that, that was in the comment but not in, in the report in itself, which I read, and not in some of the articles I read online, which is that the vulnerabilities that they were talking about, they identified 13 of them, which may sound like a lot, but uh, they, they also said in the report that vulnerabilities will exist to some degree regardless of the UAS platform that's being used. And this is like your computer, you know, this is a computer if you think about it. Um, you always have a risk, you always get viruses, and it doesn't mean that the, uh, the computer can be trusted, but uh, the more we know about these, these vulnerabilities, the more we can fix them and learn from the whole process. So I just thought this was an interesting report. Um, I try to cover everything that I can, especially when it comes to these things. I, I personally think that some of these allegations that had come up uh, lacked a lot of proof. Nobody has ever been able to come up with a, a concrete proof that DJI was doing what they were accused of doing. And this report seems to be saying that, well, in the end, there's not really any data leaving. There are vulnerabilities, but like the report said, that happens with a lot of different platforms. So anyway, I, I don't wanna beat a dead horse. I just want to get that out there. And uh, I hear this pretty much every single day. Should I buy a DJI drone? Is it safe? I'm gonna keep flying my DJI drone because based on this information, it seems to be just fine. Next thing I wanna talk about is something that happened in Canada. And this is something that's uh, very unfortunate. That, that happened actually earlier this year in February, but it wasn't reported until June of this year, very recently. And um, this happened in Canada with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. They have a helicopter, an AS350. You can see a picture right here. Uh, this is actually, the, the nickname for this is a, a French word, which is écureuil, which is always a very funny word for people uh, to, uh, to pronounce in the US. Uh, I was born and raised in France, so this is my native language. Uh, but this helicopter collided with a Sky Ranger R60 drone, which is a fairly large drone, six, seven, eight pounds a drone. And um, the, the two aircraft were actually doing some kind of uh, training exercise in British Columbia when the accident happened. Uh, this was classified as a mid-air collision. It happened around 300 feet AGL. 
and uh, no one was hurt. The helicopter eventually landed on the road and they, uh, they did this just to make sure everything was fine. They did find damage on the helicopter. They found damage on the main rotor blade. They found damage on the tail boom and on the rotor on the tail. Uh, the drone itself was destroyed. Now, this was a really expensive mistake for them. A uh, $100,000 price tag on the drone in itself. So, uh, the, the bottom line with this, and the reason I'm mentioning this is not because I want to make fun of it, because this would be a horrible thing to do, but one thing that we do in aviation is we look at accidents and we learn from them. And this is important. This is something that we need to learn from now. There's not a whole lot of details that came out about why this happened exactly. Uh, I haven't been able to find the report, but I haven't really dug very deep. Um, but the, the bottom line is, it doesn't matter what environment you're in. Even in this control environment where you have the same team working together, something like this can happen. So this is, I'm sure, going to be a great lesson for them to learn from their mistakes and, uh, and hopefully share some of this for the rest of the community so, so that this doesn't happen again. It could have been a lot more dramatic. Uh, it could have resulted there were three people on board the helicopter and uh, this could have been uh, a lot more, uh, could have been fatal, quite frankly. So. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, PIX4D. PIX4D, if you're not familiar, they're a uh, photogrammetry and drone mapping software. They're pretty much the leader out there. And they just announced new offerings in their cloud offerings. They have PIX4D Cloud and PIX4D Cloud Advanced. If you've never used PIX4D, uh, you can install it on your computer and then you can run it. If you don't have a really fast computer, even if you have a fast computer, it's going to take a while to process all of the data, all of the photos that you take for 3D mapping, 2D mapping, any kind of phot photogrammetry stuff. Um, with the cloud, you can upload your data in there and then they're going to process your data and give you 2D, 3D models. Uh, the, the base model, the PIX4D cloud, is going to provide you with 2D model, 3D model, uh, measuring tools, elevation profiles, all the basic stuff that you need. The advanced version is designed for people to keep track of projects over time, which is what a lot of people are doing, construction projects and, and, um, and doing progression construction projects. This is a, there's a big market for this out there. Uh, the price tag starts at about $165 a month for the base model, uh, $199 if you pay for it monthly. Um, this may be high for some people, but I think for the, the data that it provides, quite frankly, it's, it's, a, it's a really a, a lot for the money that you get. So. So I'm going to talk about if you're into 3D mapping, this is probably something you want to be looking into. Uh, lots of really great tool from PIX4D. And the last thing I want to talk about is something I'm really excited about. Uh, 20,000 students on Pilot Institute. We just hit that mark a couple of days ago. And uh, we have 34,000 enrollments right now from those 20,000 students. This is telling me that students are loving our courses, which we know already, and, uh, and they're enrolling in more than one course, which is really cool. This makes us one of the largest, if not the fastest growing online aviation training program in the country, which I'm really excited about. And this is all because of you guys. So thank you for being a student. If you are, if you're watching and you're not a student, well, maybe you should be. Uh, I, I don't want to do a sales pitch. This is not what I'm here for, but uh, we've been trusted by actually a lot of different uh, public agencies, departments. We have uh, high school programs that we work with. We have many professional organizations that we work with and, and we love our students. I, I, I spend my entire day answering questions, helping students and, and creating new business. And, and this is, I, I could not ask for anything better. So thanks again for all your support. This is all I have for this week. So uh, please like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we've got more videos coming up in the next couple of weeks that are pretty exciting. And, um, and this is it. I'm going to say goodbye and I'll see you guys next week.